show a little uh, recognition video about Paula as fellows and uh, hopefully have time to talk about anybody doing anything unique uh, in your clubs, how you do it, great ideas, uh, sharing ideas. Uh, uh, Carly Wasser, our Polio Plus subcommittee chair, um, is going to follow up uh, two weeks ago. We had a, a Polio town hall meeting, which is awesome, with the uh, RI's uh, Polio chair, uh, Mike McGovern on and some other uh, really fascinating people. And he's going to talk about uh, the financial, the future, including what uh, Xavier talked about earlier about the Christmas cards. And uh, we may have time to talk about the bike ride we're going to do in the spring as well, which is really a similar pattern about what Mission Trails is doing for their uh, normal in-person bike ride in December. Uh, it's a lot of, uh, you know, the four-way test of, a, you know, you turn in your time and, uh, and your money and, and uh, you get the t-shirt and been there and done that kind of thing. And so we're looking forward to that that bit of opportunities. And then we'll kind of uh, talk about the what used to be the cruise raffle and what we're going to do uh, in instead. And uh, uh, if anybody wants a cruise, you know, raise your hand. I don't see any hands, but uh, so our annual fund chair is John Hutchison. And so he's going to talk about that. And then some more of the giving kind of options and uh, we'll wrap that up. But uh, uh, so to start with, we'll do a little overview about the Rotary Foundation. Uh, and uh, so Amy, uh, and first I want to apologize on the flyer. We misspelled her last name. It's, it ends with an M and so okay. an M, but uh, uh, life goes on. So here's Amy Balkum, our Major Gibson Endowment uh, Subcommittee Chair. Amy? So hi, everybody. Um, some of this is, is going to be familiar to all of you, but just in case um, the um, this is new, we're going to kind of look at the basics of foundation. So what would it take to change the world? I mean, this is for most of us the reason we joined Rotary. Um, and that is uh, the mission of the foundation to enable us to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace. I mean, who doesn't want to do those things? And it all starts with our commitment to service above self. Real quick, I'm going to hit my timer so I don't go over my time. Um, so that's why um, we've, he's already kind of given our agenda, so I'll skip over that. So just kind of a look at the structure of Rotary Foundation funds. Um, now, Rotary Foundation obviously is part of Rotary International, but it does have its own board of trustees and um, a separate governing board for that. And from that foundation, that is a 501c3, we have five main funds. Um, the Annual Fund, Polio Plus, Endowment Fund, World Fund, and das Disaster Response. But all of those funds are working toward one common goal for us. So we know that this is an organization that we can support with confidence. Um, and one of the reasons for this is that about 90% of our spending goes to program awards and operations. In other words, you're not spending a whole lot of money to fund salaries for people that aren't out there doing things. Um, and if we look at how that breaks down, about 45% goes to Polio Plus because we're still working on that global polio eradication initiative. And then about a little over a quarter, 26% of that goes towards global grants, those humanitarian ideals that, um, that we espouse in Rotary. So that's kind of a quick overview um, of how we fit into that. And obviously, um, you know, this is a charity we can trust because um, I'm part of the Association of Outstanding of, of fundraising professionals um, in 2016, they named us the world's, world's outstanding foundation. Um, and we got a perfect 100 overall score and I think that's 12 years running. So the annual fund, this is support for today. So this is like our Rotary Fund checking account. This is the primary source of funding for most of our foundation programs. And money towards the annual fund can be directed to SHARE or to the World Fund our areas of focus. And why this is important to know is because for share, 50% of that share is what comes back to our district and our clubs in three years to help fund projects that we want to do locally and internationally. So share, what we gave in 2017 to 2018 is what came back to us in district funding 
um, this year. And so that's important for us to know. And we call that our DDF, our district designated funds. So our second fund, the endowment fund, is support for tomorrow. This is restricted giving, and this ensures our long-term viability. So basically the idea is that we have principles that are given to it and we never touch that principle. We live off the earnings from that principle. Um, so in other words, this will last in perpetuity. And so this is one of the things that trustees do is they determine the percentage of earnings that we will distribute to share each year. And so this, um, and we, we talked about this. So a commitment or gift of any amount for endowment fund can be directed to our world fund, the annual fund, peace centers, polio, or our areas of focus. So our polio plus fund, I'm, I think we're familiar with that, with us just having gotten through World Polio Day. I'm gonna let Charlie talk more about that later and move on. Our disaster response fund, um, this is strictly support for disaster recovery. Again, it's restricted giving but you cannot contribute to a specific disaster. That's why if you're wanting to address a specific disaster, you may be better off looking at doing a grant related to that. Um, and so these disaster response grants, the district itself must apply for them rather than individual clubs. So what counts for what? Why do I show this? Because people always wanna know what counts towards my Paul Harris Fellow points. Well, everything except giving to the World Fund and the Endowment Fund. And the second question we get from clubs is, what's going towards our DDF that comes back to our club? And that's what you see right here, only what you give to that annual fund share. So you want to be aware of that. Um, so why it makes sense to give? Because it supports our areas of focus and our causes, promoting peace, education, disease, clean water, mothers and children, economies, and our newest area of focus supporting the environment, and then our two causes, polio eradication and disaster relief. Uh-oh. Yep. And I'm at the end of my time. So okay. I can talk forever about this, but we'll stop right there. Amy's obviously a development person on vocationally, so we're, we're thrilled to have her working in this position and look forward to doing more with our district. Uh, and Amy, uh, in a background, she, she's a major donor and helped us with the million dollar dinner we did back in uh, the January timeframe. Uh, so we're, we're glad to have her as part of the team. We're gonna switch over now to people uh, talking about why they support, why they give, why Rotary Foundation is important to them and their philanthropic uh, giving. And so first I'll introduce, uh, who I'm looking at most of the people on the participant list here. Uh, needs no introduction, but I'll introduce him anyway. So my friend, Doug Winery, Past the governor. He did the foundation chair job for three years. He did district grants before and after he's doing district grants now for the last two or three years. Uh, he went on to do uh, polio for uh, several uh, districts in, in the states. And, uh, and now he's uh, currently doing the, uh, our district grants. She, he and Sue, Sue was uh, uh, also a Rotarian and was uh, Rotarian the year for the district. Uh, so it's, it's uh, one of those shared, uh, uh, financial supporters also of the Rotary Foundation. So uh, I'll let Doug uh, talk about why he gives to the Rotary Foundation. Doug Winery. Thanks, Jerry. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My wife and I are interested probably in three areas, education, health, and clean water. And we see a world that we want to try to get to. And we believe that the Rotary Foundation and its programs are the way to get there. And one of the things we like about the foundation is that they don't decide what projects are going to do. Each club, each district in the world gets to decide. So the ownership and disbursement of the funds comes from bottom up, not top down. And we like that. We also like the fact that uh, the Rotary Foundation is efficient, as uh, Amy indicated, and well run. Uh, we have to know probably about a third of the trustees on the, uh, on the board. We think they're good folks, we trust them, and we trust their decisions. One of the things we did along the way, Sue and I set up a named fund in the endowment. And what that means is half the earnings or whatever the percentage is of 
the earnings of the trustees decide will come back to the district as district DDF. And so there will always be money flowing into the district in DDF to uh, support programs, support projects and uh, whatever the, the governor's team decides to do. But that's pretty much in a nutshell why we support the foundation. We've been doing it for probably 25, 26 years now. And uh, we still can, even though we're major donors, we still contribute to the annual fund, still support the uh, Bolio Plus. Doug, you got some skin in the game, years of experience doing Roderick projects and things. I uh, appreciate your kind of demonstrated uh, leadership. Uh, I'll also mention when we talk about the recognition levels, we, we have uh, uh, the every Rotarian every year, and then we have sustaining members, and we have Paul Ayers Fellows and major donors and major donor plus one and plus two. And we don't talk about those dollar uh, levels. We just uh, use those code words for sort of privacy, personal reasons. And uh, so I want to recognize that Doug this year and Sue became Arch Clump Society member. So uh, our first uh, in our district for a number of years. So appreciate that. Uh, last month in September, now it's been two months, but uh, I was uh, uh, part of uh, the Alamo Ranch Rotary Club's uh, Paul Harris Fellow Award Ceremony. Uh, and one of those uh, persons is with us this evening and is going to speak to uh, why as a first time giver and a new Paul Harris Fellow, uh, she supports the Rotary Foundation. But uh, before I turn the mic over to her, I just want to say that Rosine Goods, is, uh, she's just a, a huge uh, part of their service uh, uh, programs that they do in the Alamo Ranch and uh, a vibrant part of the Rotary Club. Uh, it, it was such a pleasure to, I won't steal her thunder or risk saying something she wants to cover, but uh, so with that, uh, I'll, I'll turn this over to Rosine Goods. Rosine? Yes, sir, thank you. There are many reasons why I give to the Rotary Foundation. One of the reasons is very similar to why most of you give, because of Rotary Foundation itself, what the foundation is all about, the accountability, the impact, its record of success, its global reach, and the foundation placing significance in bringing about peace. Another reason why I give to Rotary is, it's my way of giving back to the community. I arrived in the United States in 1993, and less than six months later, I joined the Air Force. I came in with zero stripes. For those of you who are not familiar, that basically means I don't get paid much. <laughs> I did do a lot of volunteering, although at the time it felt more like being voluntold. As an enlisted person in the Air Force, I definitely had more time than money. But as I made rank and got more pay, I also started donating to organizations such as Air Force Aid and the Red Cross as a way to give back to the community. When my husband and I got married, we also did plenty of volunteer work together. We became senior non-commissioned officers, or as we became senior non-commissioned officers, or E7s and then first sergeants, we have donated as well because for the most part, we were the ones encouraging other airmen to donate. And there were many reasons why we donated. One, it's the right thing to do. Two, as senior non-commissioned officers and first sergeants, we are to set the example. And three, we can't ask people to do something we're not doing or willing to do ourselves. Mm -hmm. Volunteering and donating are not new concepts for us. We did it for over 20 years. So when we retired a few years back, and once we got settled in the civilian world, we were missing something. That's when my husband was introduced to Rotary, Rotary Club of Alamo Ranch and Rotary International by, by our district governor, Xavier Tosin, and the rest is history. So there are plenty of other reasons why I donate to the Rotary Foundation. But the last reason I will share with you is I donate because as someone who was born in a third world country, which is the Philippines, I've seen the impact and the difference an organization like Rotary International makes. Although I was blessed and lucky enough to be adopted by an American Marine, I did not get adopted until I was 15 years old. So I lived in the Philippines until then. I knew people who could not walk properly because they did not get the polio vaccine. I knew, well, still know people who don't have health or dental insurance. 
people who are not who are unable to read and write because they can't go to school because they have to work to put food on the table and help their family instead. And as a matter of fact, I still have family there. I have my mom, three sisters, and a brother who still live in the Philippines. When I joined the Air Force, my plan was to help and bring them here as soon as I'm able. I even applied and did the paperwork to start the process at the time to bring one of my sisters, and that was in 2001. I waited and checked on status constantly, and after 10 long years, we were told I can't bring her here because when I got adopted, the adoption severed my ties with them. By law, we were no longer considered sisters or family. And other than fiance and family reasons, it is next to impossible to legally bring anyone here. My biological family have a roof over their heads and don't go to bed hungry, but there are many people where I grew up who could, who could definitely use help from organizations like Rotary International. My hope is that one day I get to go back to the Philippines in one of Rotary mission or projects. Uh, and as I mentioned, there are many reasons I give to Rotary Foundation, but these are at least three, re three reasons why I do. So thank you for your time. Well said, thank you. Thank you, Rosie. We're gonna shift over to the grant side of things too, uh, humanitarian impact uh, grants. And we're gonna start with a, a district grant uh, that was partially uh, the funds to provide resources to help do this. Uh, and this is a project that's been going on for a few years, uh, a lot of success. And, and so I won't uh, steal too much of his thunder, but I'll introduce uh, uh, David Dunn, who's uh, with Bernie Sunrise Rotary Club and uh, uh, does a project that sort of tugs at your heartstrings and makes you feel really good about Rotary does. David, it's yours. Thanks, Jerry. So Bernie Sunrise Club's been working with the Ciudad Acuna Club for 20 years and Don Jones, has uh, been our main liaison who's still with us. And we've been providing school supplies to children in Ciudad Acuna who do not have access to them. The relationship has continued to build over the years and has developed into multiple side projects that we cooperate in, whether it's providing computers to the schools or air conditioners. Um, and we do a joint project at SeaWorld where we bring the kids who have um, a lot of health issues and their mothers over, and then we treat them to a day at SeaWorld and we spend the whole day with them, including interactors. So it's really special what we do with them. I've been a member of the Bernie Sunrise Club since 2016. And at least that point, we've been getting matching grants from the district since then, probably much longer than that. In 2018, several other clubs joined our effort to provide funds and service to increase the reach of our project. Uh, that year, Hondo, Del Rio, and the Fredericksburg Club all helped participate. I may be forgetting some other clubs, but it was substantial. So here's some of the details of this school supply project, and it's called the Crayola Project. We send funds to the president of the Acuna Club, who then buys the school supplies in Mexico, because it's hard for us to get them across the border without problems. Texas Rotarians then on Thursday night go to the evening meeting of that Acuna Club. We share a meal together, participate in the meeting, and we pack school supplies and enjoy adult beverages for several hours in the evening. The next morning we go back and meet at the club and we load several pickup trucks and vans with all these school supplies and we deliver to three to five schools each year. And the number of schools and the school location is different every year. Um, each delivery is greeted with considerable fanfare. Typically the entire student body gathers in a courtyard and each class creates welcoming posters, thanking us and all the clubs that were involved. So the kids have been involved in this for days leading up to our arrival. In some cases, there's a formal presentation with a microphone and speakers. The local club tries to coordinate media for some of these presentations. And frequently, the children will sing songs for us. I had a whole song recorded. It was very cute, very touching. And they're always very gracious and happy to see us. 
I'm inspired how active the Acuna Club is in their community. Uh, the principals of the schools, typically because we're there offering aid, then bends our ear and walks us around for several minutes showing us some of the other things that they need. And I was really inspired by the president of the Acuna Club. When they walked us around, they said, well, we don't have water at this grade school. We have to walk 100 yards away. The kids take buckets to go fill the uh, tanks of the toilets so that they can flush them. Well, by the end of that week, they had the uh, president talk to one of the other members of his club and they had plumbing again. Then we go to another school and the Acuna Rotary Club had purchased a wheelchair accessible swing, but the teacher said, well, it's great in Spanish. I didn't understand it, but she said, it's great. However, when it's muddy, we get the wheelchair stuck and it's over the dirt. So the president pulled aside a different club member and then two weeks later, they had a concrete pad. So it's really inspiring. We're happy to be part of that. And I think not only the aid that we provide, but I think the experience that the Rotarians get in delivering that aid is something that hooks Rotarians for life. It's that rotary moment. Thanks, David. If somebody else in another club wanted to engage with y'all, uh, what time of year should they get in touch and start working on it? Well, pre-COVID, we always did this in September and it's been delayed till January. I expect with the issues, the ongoing health issues, I expect it might get delayed again. But I would say anytime they wanna reach out would be fine. Uh, then we can coordinate applying for the grant together. And then we hope to next September at minimum, it's right at the beginning of the school year that we try to deliver the school supplies. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, in the interest of time, we'll move on and just remind everyone, if you have questions or comments, there's a chat room and a button and you can put things down there and we'll, we'll get to those later. Uh, so we have another grant, a, a global grant, and uh, uh, this one is out of the Fredericksburg Noon Club. There were some other participants that have been involved in it. It started out as a district grant uh, the prior year or so. Uh, this is water and hygiene in, in Tanzania. Uh, so I'm going to let Dr. Tom Hutton, the president of the Fredericksburg Noon Club, uh, make that presentation. Dr. Hutton, Tom? Thank you, Jerry. Pleased to present uh, a few slides, PowerPoint, on our actually district grant that was shared with both four other clubs last year. And, and this has to do with the water catchment project in Katoma, uh, Tanzania. Uh, some of you may not even know where Tanzania was. We weren't quite sure. Southeast Africa here. And this little isthmus that goes up uh, is where Katoma is, right next to Ugandan border. Uh, this is a, a very poor area of Africa. It has no, it had no safe water supply at all with high social and health costs. About 90% of the deaths under five, in fact, resulted from drinking unsafe uh, water and poor sanitation. Uh, this uh, gives rise to intestinal parasites as well as bacterial dysenteries. Uh, that, those are the most common diagnoses, in fact, at their local health center. The uh, situation regarding water, uh, prior to this grant, um, we, we had an opportunity here. There was an existing metal roof on the Catholic Church that was actually designed for water catchment, but that they had no infrastructure to actually collect the water. So the water, in fact, just drained off into the dirt. The participating clubs with the Fredericksburg Rotary Club included our Morning Club here in Fredericksburg, the Fredericksburg Nimitz Rotary Club, New Braunfels, as well as Canyon Lake. All of these clubs, in fact, put in for district grants and uh, listed them as priority number one, which we are terribly grateful for. It wouldn't have been possible without their support. This is a, a picture of the school that actually meets there at the uh, Catholic Church in Katoma. This is how they collected water, about a four mile round trip. The women and girls therefore couldn't really get involved in school or much in the way of, uh, of work. They would have to haul water all day. And this was contaminated water from a river full of parasites and bacteria. 
Uh, I like this picture because it really says what this grant was about. Uh, we were there to try to save lives. Uh, just like this little boy, uh, we were hopeful that by supplying clean water, uh, we could save lives, improve sanitation. This is the roof at the Katoma Catholic Church. As you can see, it was designed to collect water, but that pipe just drains water off into the dirt and the grass. We found an excellent Rotary Club in Bacoba, which is not too far away, 20 or 30 miles from Katoma. They had administered water projects before, and they agreed to maintain the water project if we were to finance it. Uh, so the club had extensive uh, service and uh, background and was really a good club to work with. We put in two tanks, the cost of which were just over $28,000. One tank was a little over 26,000 U.S. gallons. The other was a little over 12,000 U.S. gallons. These were double filtration tanks where it was filtered as it came into the tank off of the roof and then before it came out into the bucket or wherever they were collecting their water. Here's Father Deo, particularly important to us. Uh, Father Deo was instrumental in designing the church roof and also instrumental and urging that such a water catchment project be uh, put, put in for the Katoma Catholic Church, which is not just for the church, this is for the whole community, something we established from the get-go. Uh, here he is blessing the side of the catchment tanks. This picture I particularly like. Look at the girls and the boys carrying rocks on their heads. They were clearing the side of rocks so that uh, Bacoba could begin the development of the water catchment tanks. Again, a few pictures where they begin to do the construction, beginning the base. Watch the film version of Hamilton. Carrying away the rocks. The local dignitary showed up to dedicate the site. Again, okay. more construction this will pictures. Be done about you can see here the smaller tank going in. And this is actually Sasha Kemper, who worked for the United States Agency for International Development. And he is from Fredericksburg. And just by happenstance, he was transferred by USAID to Tanzania, just as we began our project. So Sasha traveled some distance, Tanzania is a big country, up to Katoma and inspected the uh, site as it was being developed. This is the first pail of water that was drawn from our water catchment tanks. And you might ask what's next? Well, we have put in for now a global grant, over $220,000. It actually would do more than three schools. We extended it so it would be six schools. We'd have water catchment for all of these schools, three high schools, three middle schools, as well as uh, restrooms, and even uh, a couple of incinerators to incinerate menstrual pads. So we hope that from this district grant, which provided a really proof of concept that we could work together, that we could do an international grant, that we could find a good partner in Tanzania to work with. And by doing that, we feel like it was a great leg up to trying to put in and hopefully receive a global grant for that area of Tanzania. I do want to thank a few other people, Jerry Hardy, Doug Winery, of course, our, uh, our district governor, John Hutcherson last year, and also past district governor, Judy Hutcherson. It was her year that they really collected the money that gave rise to DDF and gave rise to these five district grants. So thank all of you. Jerry, you're muted. <laughs> I thought I'd gone deaf. <laughs> that was a great speech. Uh, 
Hey, Tom, so Rotary has this vision statement about together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. So the question is, did you see that in ourselves part change people in the Fredericksburg Rotary Club? Oh, Jerry, that's such a, a wonderful question. Absolutely. That was one of the most exciting parts to see the enthusiasm. We would brief our club every month or two on progress and people just had an outpouring of support for the project. And that's really why we went on to this other international grant that we put in a global grant. Uh, clearly wouldn't have been possible without having done this district grant. Uh, it really changed our club. I'm not sure our club had ever done anything outside of our, at least our own state previously, in any meaningful way. I think this really helped define a new image for the Fredericksburg Rotary Club, and I hope it also uh, helped define the images for the other four clubs with which we worked. Super. So some of us can't go to Tanzania or do that project, but we can write checks or put our credit card to use. And so that helps me in the transition to introduce our, our major gifts officer, Shelly Hill. So uh, as I said earlier, Shelly's a Rotary staff person. She's uh, headquartered out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, been in our district a number of times over the last couple of years and was a big help with our million dollar dinner. So uh, Shelly Hill, the floor is yours and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, Jerry, and I, I promise you don't have to put your hands on your wallets. <laughs> uh, and you know, hi everybody. I miss you guys. I miss seeing your faces. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get back down to the hill country really soon. But and thank you for inviting me to be with you today as as we talk about the Rotary Foundation. And yes, as Jerry said, um, I am the major gifts officer for 25B plus. I serve our friends in Oklahoma and East Texas. So what does that mean? What's a major gift officer? I work with individual Rotarians and interested friends uh, who have the capacity and the interest in making gifts of $10,000 or more. My role is to help you identify your passion within Rotary and how you can support that passion through the Rotary through because the Rotary Foundation is the conduit, if you will, that enables the work of all Rotarians, including the transformational projects that we just heard about. I also work with you to explore the various ways you can make that gift that might be a good fit for you. Uh, Rotary being the size that it is, we have a variety of giving vehicles and ways that you can make your gift. Uh, depending upon your individual circumstance. Uh, and I am happy to work with you uh, on that. I also help you navigate that process of physically making the gift, how you uh, can get that into the Rotary Foundation. You know, it, as Jerry said, normally, you know, I spend about 25% of my time traveling. Right now, I can't do that. Uh, again, I miss all of you very much, uh, but uh, I am, and I usually come in and I'll meet with individual donors, I make club presentations, and I also work very closely with the zone and the district foundation teams. Right now, I'm working out of my home office, and we're still doing the same thing, we're still moving right along. Now, you may be asking yourself, why are major gifts are important? And why is there not only a staff person dedicated to this within the zone, but also we have volunteers such as Amy, uh, who is hand, handing over the uh, subcommittee, major gift subcommittee team. We also have an endowment major gift advisor that supports uh, the zone as well. That's Terry Ziegler and he's out of Houston. Major gifts are important because they enable Rotarians and clubs to be more ambitious because ambitious projects require ambitious resources. And therefore, it creates an even greater impact. And I think we heard Tom describing that project, what an impact that project had. To the individual, major gifts provide tax-wise ways to give cash, property, stocks, and other assets, along with bequests that can save you or your family some unexpected tax burdens. I often work with people who say, 
They hope to take care of their family, their local community, and maybe do a project, something internationally. Giving to the Rotary Foundation, where they know people who share their values will do good across the world, is often a way that helps them to fulfill that personal need. And we see that every day. And we see every day one person making a difference. Through a major gift to the annual Fun and Polio Plus, as Amy explained to us earlier, you have immediate impact. Plus, you get that three to one Gates match, which is really nice. A major gift to the endowment provides long-term support, particularly if you make a gift to endowment share, okay? Works the same way. Did you know that a $25,000 gift to the endowment endowment, 80% of those gifts go to the share program. It will yield roughly, depending on returns, about $1,000 in spendable earnings per year in perpetuity. Of that, that's DEF that your district can count on every year, year after year, and that they don't have to go out and fundraise. And that's exactly what Doug and Sue Winery did. And I think that's an incredible legacy to leave. Major can understand Rotary's major impact and what it means to be some, a part of something bigger. And if a major gift may seem out of reach to you, if you think $10,000, oh my goodness, I can't do that. Well, there are ways that we can work through a combination of different giving strategies. For example, that $25,000 endowment gift I mentioned, you could make a $10,000 cash pledge over three years, which is roughly a little bit over $3,000 per year for three years, plus, a $15 bequest. And a bequest is when you leave uh, the Rotary Foundation in your will. And I'm happy to work with any, if anybody would like to talk about that, I'm absolutely here for you. Um, another excellent resource that we have is our website, rotary.planmygift.org. Here you will find a variety of tools that can help you and your financial advisor see the possibilities of giving. And I'll drop that uh, website address in the chat uh, box here uh, shortly, along with my contact information. And in conclusion, I'm honored to serve you guys and to work with you, all the good that you do through Rotary every single day. So please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'd love to talk to you <laughs> and thanks so much. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm muted. No, I'm not. Uh, and, and some of you are saying, well, how do I fit in this? So, so what we do is, is, is of course, you, you may personally want to be, uh, take advantage of, of the opportunities presented as major gifts, but maybe you identify someone and, and you can uh, suggest the, the how to get in touch with you know, your club leader and then the, the district persons, myself or Xavier, uh, and then Amy, and then if it gets more complicated, we, we get Shelly involved, and then there's another whole staff up at Rotary International. Uh, we're going to try to stick to a timeline and be, be through at uh, uh, 730 or thereabouts. Amy, we had scheduled a little Paul Harris video, so I think we'll skip that for now. It's, it's a great video, and so I think uh, we might end up putting it on the district website so people might want to download it in the future. But uh, uh, Xavier showed that uh, when we did, we were doing online um, Paul Harris Fellow Awards, and so uh, there's uh, some techniques and tips on how you can do those things and make them seem worthwhile. And so uh, we'll make that available to you. But right now, I'll introduce our Polio Plus Committee uh, chairperson uh, uh, who's visited several clubs already. Uh, polio is the number one focus thing for the Rotary Foundation. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to introduce now Charlie Wasser from the Rotary Club of Alamo Ranch. Charlie. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. I've been having trouble over the last couple of weeks with my uh, Wi-Fi. Anybody? Yeah, good question. Anyone that can't hear me, please raise, my, raise your hand. Uh, nonetheless, there is a major initiative underway selling Christmas cards that have a polio theme. Now, Jerry was going to help me with sharing screen on this. And... What's that, Charlie? What's that? It is showing, the video is showing. Yeah, okay, well, the, the one in the middle, that's the outside of the card. I'd like to show the inside also, because the inside of the card is, there you go. 
The inside of the card shows a Rotarian on the left side giving drops to a child somewhere in the world that needs to get the vaccine. And it talks about how the $10 cost of the card will, may, will produce enough vaccine to take care of 16 children so that they will never have to worry about polio. At this point, we've sold 175 cards, which means we have enough, we're gonna have enough vaccine for 2,800 kids. If you notice how fast that goes up. Now, granted, we've got to get the vaccine out to them, but as far as the vaccine itself, if that money went to that. Uh, the next slide. Do you, do you have control of that, Jerry, or do I? Yeah, uh, Xavier's got it, but it's, it's the, uh, it's the one that has the multi-donor form. Right, and that's, uh, well, if you can't see the form, the whole point of having it on this is that when, uh, when your club buys the Christmas cards, what I'd like to do is use the, uh, use the mic, use the multi-donor form. Ammo over here, we'll find us a spot to do it. All right, we're competing. Uh, anyway, the multi-donor form will allow you to send in and give each Rotarian credit for any money they raise selling cards. It also, if you send me a copy, lets me know how many cards you need me to send over to you so that we can give the cards out. The cards to me are an example of how, when somebody says, and Shelly, don't get upset, when somebody says, we need you to donate to the Rotary Foundation, they're not always saying, pull out your wallet and give me what's in there. What they're saying is, go out knocking on doors. Uh, I moved into this area in April. I've already sold 20 cards to just people around here. They're not the hardest thing to sell. Uh, another time, and I think some of you have heard the story, friend of mine in uh, San Jose, where I was doing this also in Rotary, was a pastor of a church. And he allowed me to come up. He looked at it as he was sharing my burden. And I said, no, it's a matter of love for me to do this. He let me get on his pulpit and talk about uh, polio and then talk about the cards. It was a, with, it, with all due respect to them, as a blue collar congregation, the people did not have that much money. They gave me $500 within an hour. And just about every one of them came up to me and said, we cannot afford to belong to Rotary, but you are giving us a chance to participate. So that you're going out and you're doing a sell, but you are helping participate. You and I wanna be here. Maybe you and I can afford to be in Rotary. They still wanna participate in something as grand as ending polio. Um, I don't know how much time I have left. Real quick, the thing I've mentioned before and Jerry was alluding to it and we're, gonna, we're trying to participate in the El Tour, El Tour de Tucson. Usually in November, it's gonna be in April. There's three of us riding. I say us, cause I'm one of those riders. You can see me in the gym these days, getting ready for the trip in April. If indeed we cannot go to Tucson, there will be a virtual way of doing it. So we would have a group of people in a gym somewhere wearing rotary shirts and whatever, and uh, raising money that way doing the bike ride. The bike ride itself is either 50, 50 miles or hundred miles. And on that note, I'll end with saying, I am available to come to your club to uh, speak about polio whenever you want to do it. Well, so how many clubs have you visited so far in the last month or two? Uh, about 12. 12. Now, I've got yeah, another so. scheduled. One of them is Amy's club. She has offered to be my technician. Uh, oh, that's good. You know, and there's uh, one we're gonna have at uh, the downtown club the end of January. And I've been asked to also include other infectious diseases. So we'll have a panel doing the talking and I'm sure they would allow people to come in on a Zoom meeting. You'll hear more about that. Yeah, and it's my understanding that several clubs who are doing the polio fundraisers, uh, events playing for polios have, have uh, shifted those uh, uh, till uh, after Christmas, uh, you know, post COVID uh, pandemic kind of time frame. So we had several successful events uh, in late October. And so uh, Kerrville had a picnic, uh, the guys at Randolph had a, a pints for polio kind of thing. Uh, San Marcos had one. San Saba had a purple pinky event uh, that they, they've done. So we've done some, done quite well, so we're looking for the next. Moving along, I want to talk about the cruise raffle. And the, I don't want to talk about it. I want to give it the passage to Governor John Hutchinson, who's our annual funds uh, subcommittee chair. John, what are we doing? Well, we have had a, we our district has raff, done a raffle, district-wide raffle for many years. And we have had as the prize for that raffle a cruise. And I can tell you from personal experience in our household, Judy and I won the cruise. They pulled her raffle ticket and we won a cruise uh, two weeks in Tahiti. 
And I can tell you, it was a wonderful trip and one of the hooks that got us committed into Rotary early on in our, in our membership with Rotary. But we think the cruise really has run its course with COVID and all the health issues that are surrounding cruises. We don't think that's a viable prize. So in order to really come up with something that will be a prize for a raffle that is worthwhile, that our members will be able to sell tickets for the raffle and will be able to raise money for the annual fund for our district. And that is the DDF money that comes back to our district. We're going to conduct a survey of all the Rotarians. And we've put together four possible prize packages. Two of those packages involve things, experiences, weekends, uh, nice things, Spurs tickets, uh, golf trips, a fishing weekend at Lake Amistad, uh, boots, st James, stuff like, stuff like that. There are other two prize packages that involve gift cards uh, one package that has a Visa prepaid gift card of $4,000 and a James Avery gift card of $1,500 worth of merchandise at James Avery and $1,500 at HEB. And we would also have another package that is seven $1,000 prepaid uh, Visa cards, Visa or MasterCards. So we're asking the members of our district, all the Rotarians in the district, to give us their feedback. And what we want to know is which of these packages do you think would raise the most money for the Rotary Foundation, for the annual fund? And I'm not asking you for which of the package do you think would fit best in my household, but which of the packages would actually raise the most money for the Rotary Foundation? And I guess I should make it a little more clear about the packages. You wouldn't win a package. If the package had four items, we would draw four tickets. And one of the tickets would be Spurs tickets. One of the tickets could be boots from Letty's in San Angelo. Other ticket could be a, a fishing trip on Lake Amistad. Another ticket could be a, a gift card. So we'll have uh, four uh, drawings and uh, for, for the package. But we really want your feedback about what you think will, which, which package you think will raise the most money for the district. Now, the survey should go out sometime in the next few days, and you'll have an opportunity to return it to me, and there'll be a place on there where you can write some comments about what you think might, might be helpful. And based on your results, we'll publish the results on the website. We will design our, our raffle prizes and have our tickets printed and ready to go early in January. And we're delighted to make this change, and... We hope that we continue with a successful raffle and that we raise even more than the $75,000 that we were raising pretty consistently uh, before the sales began to go down. Thanks, Jerry. And that is what I have for the annual fund. Super. Well, we're gonna do the kind of final wrap on a few uh, various uh, fundraising things that can be done. And Amy's gonna talk about some of those. Uh, I'll just uh, give you the, Overview, there's a thing called Raise Rotary. It's like crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, Facebook kind of stuff. The Big Give, when we talk about matching points, and then the, the district governor's focus on every Rotarian every year, and then a the, the Rotary Director to kind of wrap it up. But Amy? Um, big Give slide was up. Nope. 
All right, so um, one of the ideas is if, if you're not familiar, this is a new thing that Rotary is doing, Raise for Rotary. Um, it's very similar to, to other um, fundraising sites, but it allows you to create a personalized fundraiser for whatever cause your club wants to work on. The only exception is this does not go towards annual fund. It's all of those other kinds of funds. Um, and this is something that can um, be a foundation credit for you. You can do this as an individual. Your club can do this. Your district can do this. So um, one of the districts is doing a, a, a polio-wide fundraiser. So if you're not familiar with that, check that out. Maybe we'll hear more about that in the future. Um, the big give is kind of twofold things. Um, E-Ray will talk about, but also Giving Tuesday that comes up December 1st. This is always that first Tuesday worldwide, well, actually, um, US-wide um, after the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, so that is a great time to think about making a gift to the annual fund if you haven't yet, um, as we look at that. Um, the foundation recognition points, uh, Jerry, do you want to talk about this? I just want to talk about to use this for the translation of matching points. Uh, okay. Uh, last year, during the summertime, we did a little district offered matching uh, one for one uh, on points. Uh, and and uh, you lay the slide up there. Uh, we didn't do it this year, but we, we realized that a lot of clubs have a lot of points in their club accounts. Uh, so we want to encourage you to do that. Uh, but if you think uh, matching points would help in your club uh, and you don't have any points and don't know where to get them, I can get them for you. So uh, get in touch with me and, and uh, it works. Uh, we, we started kind of the slow summertime last year, and uh, I think we probably uh, generated about $6,000 additional contributions to the Rotary Foundation. So that, that helps, uh, but that's how you can use matching points in the forms. I think most of us are familiar with how recognition points can be done. Uh, I went to one uh, today at a club uh, in San Antonio Northwest, had a member who was a major donor, had a bunch of points, and uh, she'd been sitting on them a long time and, and decided to uh, make uh, either initial Paul Harris Fellows or the next level of Paul Harris Fellows for, uh, I think there were 10 or 11 people she, she covered. And uh, it was just like, hey, remember when somebody made you a Paul Harris Fellow and donated points to you and what it meant? Uh, did you make your spouse one or uh, a child or all 12 of your grandchildren? Uh, that's how we talk about using recognition points to do something meaningful for them and, and maybe encourage them to continue giving to the Rotary Foundation. Next slide, Amy. We kind of talked about E-Ray, but, um, you know, this is kind of the starting point for people who are new to giving, um, is this 25 per year, and that's a, a good goal if you're a, a club that hasn't been achieving some of those banners we talked about. Um, and one of the ways they can do that is through signing up through Rotary Direct, um, that this can be a monthly, quarterly, or annual um, giving that they do. It just takes a few minutes to set this up. You can adjust it or cancel it any time. Um, but this is an, a great way to get started towards giving. Um, you just want to be sure also anytime you give online, if you're trying to accumulate points um, towards your, your Paul Harris Fellow, you want to be sure that you sign into My Rotary before you give that donation. If you don't, it's not going to accumulate to your name in your account. And I think maybe this is question time. Uh, and I just thought that might be helpful for you to see who all serves on our foundation team. So Jerry, I'll leave the rest to you. Uh, the only thing I saw in chat was a question about uh, uh, the Spurs ticket not being such a, a dynamic opportunity. Uh, realize the raffle is in the, the year 2021. Uh, so we raffle off a Spurs uh, ticket opportunity for the, the following year. So the draw would be uh, you know, in, in the April, May time frame, uh, season usually ends, uh, uh, depends on how well they do, but, <laughs> but by the end of May. So, uh, yeah, it would be the 21-22 season that the opportunity to go to this first game, most likely. Uh, but that's kind of uh, the, the final bit on the chat. Uh, anybody have any questions, just kind of time hall, unmute yourself and uh, speak up. Well, hearing none, it's 7.35, and uh, I will say thank you again so much, uh, Governor uh, Xavier, for hosting us this evening. I do want to throw in another uh, hats off to uh, 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 Tom Hutton. I forgot on the introduction, 
Uh, Tom went from being the club president, he's an assistant governor, and uh, he actually did an in-person visit yesterday. He was at the Oak Hills Rotary Club, one of his clubs in San Antonio, and uh, kind of shout out to him for that kind of role model, uh, what he does. And so, uh, as uh, Rosine Good said earlier, a lot of times we're into volunteering people and being volunteered. And uh, so it's all uh, volunteers, whether you're in one of those persons on the list that Amy said, or your informal leaders in your club, uh, making a difference in the world is what we all do. So uh, without any further ado, I don't hear anybody else saying I have something I have to talk about. Uh, we're gonna adjourn this meeting and thank you all for being with us. Thank you. Thank you all, outstanding. Have a great evening. Thanks, Governor. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Xavier. You bet, Tom. Thank you, Jerry. Good presentation. Thanks, Bill. Oh, nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> you just noticed? I don't think that's Fair Oaks Ranch. It looks more like somewhere in Georgia. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Azaleas? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're going to be playing in a couple weeks, you won't see the azaleas, but you'll mm -hmm. see the grass. Yeah. And uh, this may be the only way you're going to get to see it this year. Oh, yeah. right there. But they're going to play it. I think it's in two weeks. Yeah. So this was the last one. We last uh, The last time we played, we just happened to be there. So take some pictures and think about it. Remember it. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys rocked it. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, we had a good crowd. It was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, wow. and we recorded it. So. Well, so, thanks for, for letting us take one of the town halls. We, we appreciate it. <laughs> absolutely. And we can do it again in the future if you need to. And, and I certainly can.